Welcome back everyone to the chemistry channel All Watch Less Speedrun. Today I'll be adding myself to another one by making chloroform. Chloroform was used before as an anesthetic, but it's now used as a solvent for the most part in chemical reactions. Now it took me a while to find the correct recipe for chloroform, as the most places where I look like Quora for example just told me not to do it. Now, after some digging, I did manage to find a soulless enough looking article which actually explained everything in detail. So the process is pretty simple, based off of what I can see. I'd advise you not to do this, as chloroform is quite dangerous. I will do this, however, because I do not care. So in preparation of the toxic anti-awake, I'll be using the acetone I made last time. Here's a bottle, I purified it. There was a lot less of it, uh, I distilled it again, so now it's a lot more yellow, there's a lot more acetone in it than any kind of organic junk, and there's a lot less water in it. I will also need a chemist's favorite drink on Valentine's Day, bleach, and an ice bath. Well, the bleach is going to be used for the reaction, but why the ice bath? It's to strengthen the heart and the soul of any person who takes a bath in it to the strength of a monk in the winter. Actually, the ice bath is just to lower the temperature of the reaction. So the process is really quite simple. I get this ice bath, put it on the table. I get a bottle of bleach. Open it. It actually doesn't smell as bad. After sniffing chlorine, this smells quite good, actually. I get the acetone, try and make sure that all the droplets on the sides did actually mix with it. And... That's literally it. Just mix it around a bit more. And leave it like this for an hour. Now this setup of bleach and acetone, uh, notice how I didn't measure any bleach. That's because I didn't have much acetone. Is that gonna be material friendly in terms of bleach? Hell no, not close. But hey, it's quite just bleach, I really do not care. Now I will leave this like this for an hour or two with the cork, while praying that that's all the safety precautions which I need. I'll leave this for an hour and I will update you on the results. Now I couldn't quite capture this, but I took the bottle out just now, like 20 seconds after I finished recording the last clip, and shook it a bit with all of the built up rage I've had from the past week of studies. I shook it and I noticed that there was a white fog spreading around inside of it. So I'm guessing that means that the chemical reaction is occurring, or at least the two substances are mixing. As you can see, it's slightly a bit less yellow. I'll wait for it for another hour. Again, this isn't a tutorial, this is me trying to make it. I'll update you after if it actually worked. I'm not expecting much by any means. Aha! If you take a look right now, you can see that the mixture is much more foggy than it was, and that there's a blackish line up there. I currently, at the time of making this video, do not know what that is. But the fact that it's foggy does mean that it's reacting. A change in color is a sign of a chemical reaction. So I left this thing sitting here for approximately two hours, went to like Walmart, got myself a bit of Dr. Pepper in the meantime. And as you can see, the liquid is now much more white. There is hardly any traces of yellow in it at all. So now I will lift it up and actually see what is underneath it. At the bottom I meant. So I'll take this, I'll wipe it. But there should be, it's kind of hard to see right now because you just mixed everything up. But I'll leave this here for a second. I'll show you then. All right, so you can kind of see the small amount of chloroform on the bottom. As chloroform is insoluble, it didn't mix with the rest of the liquid, resulting in this small mass of liquid. Uh, it's this small because it didn't have much acetone to work with. I will now try to filter the water out and then distill it. So right now I'll be trying to drain off the water and unreacted bleach out of this bottle 
and then to this other cup. Unfortunately, due to the lack of better methods, I'll be using the old-fashioned syringe for this. Just draining the water and pouring it inside. Oh, it certainly smells pretty weird. It smells... Oh yeah, that's definitely chloroform, though there's not much of it. For anyone who hasn't smelled chloroform, it smells kinda sweet. It has a very weird, sweet, synthetic-like smell. That's exactly what's coming out of the bottle. Well, I drained a lot more water out of it, and you can see the chloroform much clearer now. It's right at the bottom. However, unfortunately, it's very dirty because of all of the burnt organic material I had in the making of the acetone. Let's see. So I'm back with the good old distillator setup to actually distill the chloroform from the water because chloroform boils at around 60 degrees. I apparently yeah, I can actually attach the distillator to this bottle. So let's actually get this thing up and running. That's a low for now. And I'll meet you back when something begins happening. So now the distillator, the flask, is beginning to heat up. I explained how this whole system works in another video. Uh, it's beginning to heat up and it's beginning to evaporate quite quickly because there is not much to evaporate. There's only like a few drops. This bottle right here, for now, it's quite empty. I'm expecting like one or two drops because there's actually not much. I'll notify you when there's actually water dripping down, not water, I mean chloroform dripping down. Well, it is definitely beginning to evaporate. You can see the drops rising up on the sides of the flask, but slowly dripping down. That's from the lack of heat. It'll pump some more water into this thing. And... Well, it's dripping down because it can't quite reach the tube. The entrance to the tube is small. That's a design flaw which I have. It's boiling up and by the time... Yeah, you can see there's beginning to, it's beginning to bubble. It's boiling up and it's going to begin dripping down into this thing. Right any second now. It is definitely bubbling up in there. It smells really sweet right now. I should probably do this in a fume hood. Unfortunately, I do not have a fume hood, so I'll keep smelling sweet things for now. So after I noticed a thin layer of wash rising on the top, I cut the heat off in the most efficient way possible. As you can see, it's on its side right now. I cut it off and I got this bottle of a translucent-like whitish mixture. I'll examine this a bit closer. I'll tell you what it is. So I examined this bottle quite carefully and I've come to the conclusion that, for the most part, it is unfortunately water. If we were to have a look over here, it's very hard to see. You can see exactly where the chloroform is. For the most part, this is water. I'm guessing I straight up evaporated the chloroform out of existence into fumes so right now uh, if i open this bottle which is full of fumes of chloroform it smells really sweet so if i had to guess my limiting factor was the distillator inefficiency and the fact that i had hardly any good pure acetone to work with so i wouldn't say this experiment was a complete success i wouldn't say it was a complete failure either as i did quite manage to get a little bit of chloroform at the bottom of the Erdlenmeyer flask, as you saw. I didn't, however, manage to purify it as I expected it to. I'm going to try a similar experiment to this next week, where I can actually make a tutorial. I'm going to try and make a tutorial on how to make chloroform next week. I'll have a lot of acetone next time, so that won't be the limiting factor. Anyway then, uh, till next time, see ya.